The following recording is to be made on Friday, February 18, 1977 in Mount Airy, Maryland. <laughs>
to do would be to kill myself. Oh. I just don't want any coffee. I'll, I'll make you some tea.
Doubtful, Bill. Very doubtful. I agree. Certainly, if she had made a decision like that, she would have discussed it with Adam. Well, of course, women have been known to make that decision without consultation, but uh, those women weren't the cold, right? You're so right. There is something else, too, Mike. We came up with a witness who saw Nicole that day. You have? Yes. Now, this fellow claims that he saw Nicole being driven in a car by a male driver. He couldn't describe the driver, nor could he describe the car, other than to say that it was a blue sedan and the license plate began with the letter M. That was it. Who could it possibly have been? I don't know, Mike. Also, I don't know whether she was there willingly or unwillingly. And if she was there willingly, it was because she was with someone she had an appointment with? Is that what you're suggesting, Bill? Mike, I, I suppose it's possible that she did have an appointment. A medical appointment. Without telling Adam anything? No, Bill. Never. Well, there's something that I want to ask you, then. <laughs> Do you think I should tell Adam? Would you like me to tell him? If you think it's a good idea. Okay, I'll do it, but I'm not going to mention the theory about Nicole being some shady doctor. Well, what is it? Shady doctor. Right. Bill, before you make any more phone calls, will you please tell me what this is about? 
Adam, remember the guy who said that he saw Nicole at the corner of 4th and Montgomery? Yeah, I was right here. All right. He claimed that all he saw was Nicole looking out the window of the car, right? Yeah. Couldn't describe the driver of the car. Couldn't identify the type of car other than to say that it was a blue sedan, had a license number that started with the letter M, which suggested that possibly the driver of the car might have been a doctor. So I started thinking, how many doctors does Nicole know? Dr. Lacey? Chris Neely? And the phony doctor, Clay Jordan. Yeah, but why would she get into a car with Jordan? She knows that he's wanted for questioning and Quentin Anderson's murder. I don't have the answer to that, and All I know is that she did not go for a ride in the car with Dr. Lacey because he drives a light gray sedan. Chris Neely doesn't even own a car, but our information points out that our friend Clay Jordan does drive a blue sedan. Yeah, but I thought you said you were certain that he'd left the country. I thought he might have, Adam. After Phoebe was killed, I would expect that he would have been a million miles away from here. He had good enough reason. I've never stopped looking for this man, you know that. Well, I know. You have to find him. Let me ask you something, Adam. What? Are you certain that Jordan never tried to contact Nicole? No notes, no, no phone call? Oh, no, not out of the house. I don't know about the new moon. All right, that's the next call that I was going to make. I want to find out if there were any calls at all from Nicole before she left the restaurant that day. Helen, get me the new moon cafe. I want to talk to Molly O'Connor.
got me down. Me cold being out there someplace. If only I'd been paying attention, none of this might have happened. Oh, Molly, stop it. I'm tired of hearing you talk like that. And you're not to blame for what happened, okay? You're no longer a bodyguard. You're not responsible. I know. I know, I know. You keep telling me. Everybody keeps telling me. I can't help thinking about that poor girl and her condition. What condition? Well, you know, after all she's been through. Yes. Did um, Chief Marceau say they had any leads or anything? Well, not after something, but he didn't say what. Strange. I wonder if um, John and Lori know about this. I doubt it. I hope not. Ignorance is bliss. They're supposed to be out there having a vacation and enjoying themselves. And by the way, when are you going to take some time off? Why? Do I look like I need it? Well, it's funny you should say that, but the law that you bring the subject up, yes. <laughs> it's not a vacation I need, Molly. It's a good night's sleep. Oh. Are you still having that problem? Yes. Yeah. Well, I've always had trouble sleeping. Even when Danny was with he used to fall asleep the minute his head hit the pillow. I'd watch him for a little while and then read until about one or two in the morning. He was so cute when he was asleep. Aren't these sessions helping you any? You mean with Dr. Neely? I only had one or two. They're really not doing anything. Did he give you something like pills or something? No, I didn't want pills. He is trying to get me into hypnotherapy. I tried it the other day, did I tell you? It didn't work. Well, doesn't that help the sleeping problem, though? No, it's nothing to do with helping the sleeping problem. You couldn't get me hypnotized at all. I just resisted it. Oh. Well, maybe that's because you got a strong mind. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about a strong mind. I certainly have strong defenses, that's for sure. Well, I just a lot of mumbo jumbo anyway. <laughs> I mean, think about it, honey. Confidentially, I mean, if you let one of these big hands and doctors hypnotize you and they have you in their power, and, huh, well, you never know what might happen to you. They could have their way with you. <laughs> no, no. That is not such a bad idea after all. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make you an appointment with Dr. Neely, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I would be baby snatching. <laughs> now, I think it's you he wants in his power. Oh, uh, yeah? Oh, he likes you. <laughs> Haven't you noticed? Does he? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the camera. I first saw him coming in here, and he looked at... Oh, and there I go again with my own foot-in-the-mouth disease again. It's okay. No. I mean, there you are. You're a married lady and so forth. I shouldn't be. Okay. I'm married, okay? But there isn't any so forth. Gotta get to work. That's from halfway around the world. Not one of them has any indication at all where Clay Jordan might have been. Oh, if your theory is correct, he's here in this vicinity. Maybe. Maybe. He could have driven the call anywhere. But why? But why? What's the motive? And what does he want from him? Maybe he intended to use Nicole as a hostage. Maybe he's still after information about Revenor's island, but he must know that it's too late for that. No, not necessarily, though, because there's no publicity on that. Well, maybe he doesn't know. Maybe he's not aware that there was a raid on the island that Revenor got away. But are you suggesting that Nicole was kidnapped for information? Isn't it logical, Adam? Think about it. Jordan has got to be two steps behind us if he still thinks he can use Nicole. Yeah, but when he finds out that he can't, what then? <sighs> I mean, there must be some way. There must be something else we can do, Adam. I've got an APB out on this guy's car. There must be some other way that we can trade. Wait a minute, I got an idea, Adam. What? Prescriptions. Come with me, Adam. Hold it. Yo, priority assignment. I want every available man on it. You name it, Chief. All right. Starting right here, Montgomery. Corner, Montgomery and Fourth. I want to check on every pharmacy in the city. And then we'll spread out the perimeter from there. Do you understand? Yeah, what are we calling about? 
prescriptions, Hogan. Prescriptions. I want to find out if any prescriptions have been written by a Dr. Clay Jordan. You understand? Clay Jordan. Any prescriptions written within the past two months.
Philadelphia of night, Monday, February 21st, 1977. I know you've got men manning the telephones, Ed, but I'm not getting any results. No, I need field work on this. Now listen to me. Every man that's out on the street with a photograph of Clay Jordan in his pocket can help me. That's right. Hold on a minute. What do you got? Just a checklist. We've covered the first perimeter. Nothing at all? Not one lead. No prescriptions from any Dr. Jordan. I'll get back to you. All right, then start on the second perimeter. We already have. Now listen to me. I want every drugstore in town covered. Any man that tells you they don't have time to get those prescri prescription records covered, tell them we'll send somebody out to do it for them. Right. Wrong time. 
Phoebe. She tried to convict me. She tried to get my fingerprints. I didn't, I didn't plan on this, Dad. Maybe that's why it was so ugly. This one I wanted them to be merciful. Why does there have to be another death, Clay? Why? We just talk too much. We've talked about the wrong things. The police one. Aren't sure about Henderson and Phoebe. Of course they are. Bill is absolutely convinced. They found poison in Phoebe's system. I hate it. I hate this. I want it over as soon as possible. Oh, Monday, February 7th, 1970. Uh, the doctor brought it in himself. When I asked for the patient's name, uh, 
He said it was for himself, for some work he was doing. Let me ask you, do, do you remember what he looked like? Well, I was kind of busy, but he was a tall, good-looking man. I remember that. What was the prescription? What did you give him? It's a sodium pentothal solution. I see. You, uh, you didn't deliver it by any chance, did you? Uh, no. Uh, the doctor uh, waited for it until it was ready. And you have no idea where he might have gone after he left your pharmacy? Nope, not the faintest idea. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hedden. Right. Anderson. He said they got a lead on that Clay Jordan. Jordan? Hey, are you kidding? Well, he says that you're carrying around a photo of the guy, is that right? Yeah. I have it. I've been carrying it ever since uh, that girl was murdered. Hey, oh, wait, man, what? Why, what's look, going on? Wait a minute. Hold on. Go on, Captain. Well, it seems this guy, Jordan, could possibly have something to do with Nicole Drake's disappearance. Huh. Now, there's a drugstore in the neighborhood that's reported getting a prescription from him about four days ago. He wants us to check it out. Look, why don't you check it out? Take the picture and leave us alone, okay? We want to have some dinner. Deborah, I have to be in on this thing. Come on, Kevin. Well, what about the ballet? The what? Uh, look, okay, order yourself a salad and stay here. I'll be back when I get back. Come on, Calvin, let's go. Thomas?
pharmacy is right here, so we've got to find him inside of this district. That's where he's got to be. Well, Chief, there's a, it's a big territory. There are about 100 hotels and single-room dwellings and residential hotels there. It's a lot of hours, Bill. Even days. We'll find him, Adam. I promise you, we'll find him. Yep. This is the doctor, all right. This is the man that gave me the prescription. And you, uh, you say you waited for it? That's right. So, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, got a pretty good look at him, even though I was kind of busy. Uh, but you don't know where he went from here. Couldn't begin to tell you. You haven't seen him since. I mean, not even just in here, but in the neighborhood anywhere? Nope, sorry. Come on, man, we're just wasting time. Now, where do we go, man? Where do we go for? Hey, Bill. Who's yeah. going? Yeah. Huh? Right away. Someplace. Yeah, I hey, wait. Uh, it's him. It's the same name on this description. What? Got him. Forget it. There's no way out of this, Leo. Yeah, well, you better find me a way out of this. 
And I'll think of a way of letting her go on living. Let me crack the clothes, Lord. Hey, you heard her. She knows she's in here. I want to talk to her. Is, is, is Adam there? She wants to know if her loving husband is out there. No, he's not here. Now, listen to me, Jordan. Don't make things any worse for you than they already are. Now, let me talk to her.
girl said she was all right shape when she came here. Yeah, just groggy. Well, we've been out here about ten minutes now. I don't think you need worry, Adam. Not to be reassured until I see her. Well, after what she's been through in the last three days, it's hard to believe that she's safe and sound in that bed. And the irony of it. The man tried to kill her for information that everybody else in this town already knows. Where that island is. And the one thing she could tell him, that the police were on their way to raid Revenant's Island, he wouldn't accept. Excuse me, I'm uh, Dr. Jonathan Haspel. Which one of you is Mr. Drake? I am, Doctor. Your wife's going to be all right. Well, that's awful good news. Yes, I'm sure that's all you need to know right now. We can talk later. But I can see that you're rather anxious to get in there and see her. Uh, may I caution you to take uh, only a few minutes with this visit? Of course. She's going to need a lot of rest. Body's been through a tremendous ordeal trying to fight off the effects of these drugs. All I need is five minutes, Doctor. I'll be very happy. You can go right in. Mike, you going to be around? Uh, no, I have an appointment to see our star witness at his hotel. But I should be finished by six if you care to join me for dinner. Yeah, fine. Where? Armando's? Yeah. Love to Nicole. He came bursting through that door like an avenging angel. It's not a bad name for him. That's exactly what he was doing, avenging his daughter's death. I still don't know how he found me. Well, we have plenty of time to talk about that. No, 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 no. Go. I still know we do have time. I thought for a while there I had run out.
Operator, this is room 646. Will you notify the police to come up here and tell them to bring an ambulance? Thank you.